Hello, and welcome to my Art History Renaissance to Modern Final Project. What you are looking at is an oil on canvas called Tree Roots by Vincent van Gogh. This was Vincent's last painting. He died with it unfinished. It is now believed that Vincent worked on this painting for most of the day on Sunday, July 27, 1890. That's the day that Vincent received the bullet wound that two days later on July 29, 1890, ended his life. This is a photograph of Vincent. There are some that refuse to acknowledge the authenticity of this photo, but compared with his own self-portrait, you can see that this was indeed Vincent van Gogh. Vincent Willem van Gogh was a sad, disturbed soul who created so many works of art that are famous today. Yet in his own lifetime, he considered himself to be a failure. If not for his loving and dedicated brother Theo and Theo's wife Jo, Vincent would have had a much harder time in life. This photograph is of Theo van Gogh. Perhaps you see a resemblance between the two brothers. Theo was extremely devoted to his older brother. He supported Vincent, paid for him to be treated when his depression and other mental maladies became too much and even kept him supplied with paints, canvases, etc. so he could keep creating. Theo managed the Groupe Hill and Sea Art Gallery in Paris. This company was and is one of Europe's best known fine art and print dealers. And Theo stocked as many of Vincent's paintings there as he could trying to sell them. The two brothers were very close. They wrote back and forth their whole lives and much valuable information has been gleaned from reading those letters. The man in this photograph is Wooten van der Veen. Besides having an awesome name, he is also a scientific advisor at the Van Gogh Institute in auvers sur While looking through old postcards of that town, which was also the town where Van Gogh lived last, van der Veen spotted this postcard. A simple black and white photograph which shows a cyclist on a road with a steep slope of trees in the background. On this slope, some tree roots were visible, even on the old postcard. There was something striking, something that seemed familiar to van der Veen. Van der Veen continued to study the postcard and being very thorough researcher, even had the museum specialist in plants verify what kind of trees were shown in the postcard. After more consideration, van der Veen realized that the reason this scene looked so familiar was that it closely resembled the roots featured in Vincent's painting, Tree Roots. Housed at Amsterdam's Van Gogh Museum, Tree Roots has always been one of the most popular exhibits. After comparing the 1890 painting with the 1900 postcard, Wooten van der Veen realized that this similarity was something that had to be investigated. He had to wait until May of 2020 to begin researching the site in person due to COVID-19 concerns but when a team could finally visit the site, they were astounded by what they saw there. Much of the root structure from the painting could still be identified at the physical location. It is astounding that so many features should match up after all those years, but you can see this demonstrated for yourself when you take a look at this next image. This image is the painting Tree Roots, which has been adapted and partly superimposed over the postcard. This stretch of road in auvers sur has been verified by the Van Gogh Museum as being the location where Vincent spent most of the day on July 27, 1890, the day he began painting tree roots, the same day he was shot. In fact, the Van Gogh Museum has obtained permission and erected a plaque at the location telling visitors that this is where tree roots was painted. But why? Why, you may be asking yourself, is all this important? And what is so important about this discovery in particular? Well, that is what I'm here to tell you. All of this is important because it may change the way people look at Vincent's life and his death. For so long, it has been assumed that Vincent, in a fit of depression, walked out to the wheat fields and shot himself. This discovery supports other evidence that on that last Sunday, Vincent was working hard, just like any other day. He went out to this location and began to paint tree roots. Later, he packed his canvas and working materials 
and returned to the inn where he lived less than a three-minute walk away to have his Sunday lunch as usual. Later, after he had eaten, Vincent went back out to the same spot next to the road to add more details to the work. This was not his normal behavior when he was depressed, so you can see that this new information supports the theory that Vincent did not actually kill himself. It has been theorized that he went back out late that evening to visit the wheat fields, perhaps to start planning a new painting. The theory goes on to state that Vincent got into an argument with some local young men, which was not terribly unusual due in part to Vincent's eccentricities. But on this occasion, one of the locals shot him. He was able to make his way home, and two days later, after he had been seen by a local doctor and his brother Theo came to be at his side, he passed away from that gunshot from a local. And it was that injury, not a self-inflicted injury, as has been widely believed, that took Vincent's life. For many years, it has been assumed that this painting, Wheat Filled with Crows, was an expression of Vincent's depression and despair as he contemplated ending his own life. But in fact, Vincent painted those same wheat fields over and over while he stayed at the inn next to them. Vincent loved the dramatic cloudy skies and the ever-present crows in those fields, and he painted them often. At that time, the inn was an artist's colony, and usually Vincent went out to paint the fields when he was in a good mood, and he kept to himself when he was having a fit of depression. Over the decades, it has been speculated that Vincent's mental issues included everything from epilepsy and schizophrenia to alcohol abuse, psychopathy, bipolar disorder, and borderline personality disorder. One thing is for sure. Vincent tended to be withdrawn when depressed, but very busy at his art when he was not. The fact that he went out and painted all day on the day he was shot shows that he may not have been depressed at all. According to all accounts, it was otherwise a productive normal day, and that runs counterintuitive to the idea that he might then go out to the wheat fields later on and kill himself. Further, if Vincent had gone out to the wheat fields to kill himself, why then would he not just stay where he fell, staring up at the starry skies that he loved, as night fell and his spirit left this world? But instead of doing that, he took himself back to the inn, and why? for help. So this then is Tree Roots, the very last painting to be produced by artist Vincent Van Gogh. It is unfinished, yet so powerful. According to Jan Hulsker, a Dutch art historian noted for his work on Vincent Van Gogh, it is the most original of his canvases. The average viewer thinks he can identify tree roots and trunks, but is hard put to identify the subject as a whole. The truth is that the true power of tree roots is in the painting itself and not the subject. Vincent van Gogh's technique on tree roots was so unique that it heralded the advent of abstract painting as well as German expressionism. A man before his time, one of the most prolific painters of his or any time, and the man who created this painting, Vincent van Gogh, was and continues to be someone who gave so much of himself to his art, who forged ahead even when he felt like a failure. He made a huge impact on the art world and even now, so long after he left this world, he continues to inspire and impress us. So take some time and explore Tree Roots and the rest of the Van Gogh Museum, which is available online. It is a place where many stories are told, discoveries are waiting to be made, and the life of an amazing, talented, and unfortunately very disturbed man is exposed, open for your inspection. Tree Roots is a painting that even now grows in importance and is still changing things in the fascinating world of fine art.